Welcome home, children of God. The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence and gratitude to God. All those able, please rise for our litany for Christmas. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia. Shout out to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. O Christ, splendor of God's eternal glory, the mighty word sustaining the universe. Renew our lives by your presence. O oh Christ, born into the world in the fullness of time for the liberation of all creation, release all into your promised freedom. O oh Christ, begotten of the Father before all time, born in a stable in Bethlehem, May your church be a sign of hope and joy. O oh Christ, truly God and truly human, born to a people in fulfillment of their expectations, fulfill our desires in you. O oh Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, child of wonder and splendor, Mighty God of all ages, Prince of Peace, may the whole world live in peace and justice. All powerful God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Teach us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
You may be seated. Friends, in Jesus Christ, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While you and I were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and other, one another, first together, then afterwards in silence individually. Let us join in the prayer that is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of wonder, you surround us with the signs of your glory and surprise us with your presence. Yet we often miss the marvels you place before us. Forgive our dullness and make us alert to the ways we may opt to witnesses to your good news and proclaim your extravagant love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now let's bet on silence, bringing to God our individual prayers of confession. Amen. In Jesus Christ, God rescued us. But according to God's mercy, people of God rejoice. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Also with you. Please share God's peace with those worshiping near you. Good morning, and welcome to Memorial Presbyterian Church. Happy fifth day of Christmas. I did not receive any golden rings this morning, but I am still happy to be with you. I would like to turn your attention to the bulletin. Please pull out the uh, golden rod insert, which has a list of all the things going on here at Memorial. There's always something to get into. This morning, I want to draw your attention to the announcement that your contribution envelopes are now ready to pick up in the fellowship hall after the service. That is all my announcements for this morning, so I would like to go ahead and call up Miss Judy Robb for a moment with our children. So all of God's little ones, you are welcome to come up. Okay, if I don't have any children, I'm going to have to have some volunteers to come because I am going to do this children's message. <laughs> Robbie, come on up. Skyler, come on up. I need some help. I need some help. <laughs> don't, Reagan, where are you? Come on up. <laughs> I'm going to start. Don't, don't, don't get too comfortable because I'm... Come on, Joey. Come on, I need some help. I need some help. <laughs> 
I've worked too hard on this to not, not at least do it. <laughs> okay, th thank you, very good. Okay, I'm going to give each of you a, we're going to do the 148th Psalm. It's gonna be a little bit shortened. I know they'll be glad to hear. So I'm going to give each of you, okay, you have one and two. You're gonna stand up because you're gonna face the congregation. You can have three and four. <coughs> Five and six, seven and eight, <coughs> nine, you have another eight and a nine, and then I'll do the rest. Take that one too. Okay, now turn around. You gotta turn around and face the congregation. <laughs> and I guess the congregation thinks they're gonna get out of this because every time I raise this, you're going to say praise the Lord. Does everybody have it now? Okay, we're, we're, going, we're going to start with Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Number one. From the heavens and praise him all his... You just have to hold your sign up. I'll read it. You don't have to read it. Hold it up. Turn it the other way. They got to see the pictures. Come on now. I can tell I need to rehearse my children here. Okay, let's try this again. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Hold it up, Robbie. High. And, fr and from him all his angels. Praise the Lord. For the sun and the moon and the shining stars. Joey, hold number two up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters. Fire, hail, snow, and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Praise the Lord. Mountains and hills. Fruit trees and cedars. Praise the Lord. Somebody have wild animals? Do you have wild animals? Wild animals. <laughs> And cattle. Praise the Lord. Men and women. Men and women. Praise the Lord. Old and young. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Thank you, Judy, for that rousing children's message. That was great. <laughs> getting you all warmed up for the sermon today. I'm going to you know it's going to be another really good one. So I'm uh, glad that we well, thank Judy for your ministry, not only today, but all the things you do in the church. We are really blessed at Memorial. We have some people who do several different things in the life of the congregation. Judy's one of them. She certainly unselfishly serves of her time and her talents with everybody. Yeah. Let us now quiet ourselves as we prepare for our prayers. And first of all, we'll have our prayer for illumination for the scripture. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may obey your will through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the Old Testament, Psalm 148. And this is titled, Praise for God's Universal Glory, the theme of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost. I don't know about snow and frost, but anyway. I guess they'll have to say that in the north anyway, don't they? 
stormy wind fulfilling his command. <laughs> Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, prince and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his glory is above earth and heaven, he has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 7 to 9. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord. Because of all that the Lord has done for us, and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown to them, according to his mercy, and according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. And in his love, 
and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. I got engaged to my husband when I was 22 years old. And I was as extroverted then as I am now, and I loved a good party. So I knew when it came to planning our wedding reception, I wanted it to feel like a party, like a big celebration. There are a few things I love more than to dance. And I'd been to many weddings in my lifetime, and I'd watched as some brides and grooms got stuck greeting hundreds of people, many of them strangers, going table to table, making small talk as the party went on beside them. That would not be me, I insisted. I warned everyone I could think of, if you want to spend time with me at my wedding reception, you'll come find me on the dance floor. And they did. And like any good wedding reception, eventually our DJ, AKA our friend Eric, who offered to do music for free, played Cool in the Gang's famous song, Celebration. Is it even a wedding reception if you haven't danced to Cool in the Gang? Celebrate good times says the song. We all know the tune, it's timeless. In fact, why don't we sing it together? I'll go first and then you repeat after me. Celebrate good times, come on. Celebrate good times, come on. Wow, that was really good. I thought I was gonna have to make you do it again, but you're off the hook. This song is not just good for wedding receptions, it's good for life. You don't often hear a sermon on a psalm, or much less on Cool in the Gang. But when I read Psalm 148 in today's lectionary, I just couldn't help myself. I almost forgot this psalm existed, which is really a shame because it's just so stunning. The core meaning of Psalm 148 is that all of creation celebrates and praises the Lord. And creation, by its very existence, is celebrating the works and goodness of the great and almighty creator of the universe. We are still in the Christmas season. There are 12 days of Christmas starting with Christmas Day and leading to Epiphany. And this is to be a season of celebration. Yes, the holidays can get us down. The heavy consumerism, the reminder of loneliness and estrangement, the hustle and bustle of gift buying, parties, obligations. But this psalm is a reminder that even when there is pain in our lives, even when there is despair, even when we feel like we just can't bear the sadness, there is still something to celebrate. Back in, my, back in November, my family and I, we went on a little hike in Guana. It was a gorgeous day. Big, fluffy clouds in the sky, a crisp blue sky. The sun was warm, but the breeze was cool enough to put any bugs or humidity at bay. And on our walk, I pointed out this little mushroom that was peeking through some dead leaves to my daughter, Esther. She's five. And after I pointed out the first one, she could not stop finding them. A little pink mushroom here, a little white one with soft ridges underneath over there, 
a collection of mushrooms hanging out together on a tree stump, big mushrooms, little mushrooms, oddly shaped mushrooms, picture perfect mushrooms. Each time she found one, she yelled, Mom, look, another one, come look, come look. And we crouched down on the forest floor and examined the specimen closely. She was thrilled to bits about, well, fungus. She celebrated the beauty and oddities and creation of each one with delight. A week later, we were getting ready to have my in-laws over for dinner. My father-in-law's birthday was that week, and we were cooking dinner and cake to celebrate. We'd gone to the store to buy the fixins for dinner and to buy a gift. And when we got home, Esther said, Mom, how are we going to decorate? Um, decorate? Honey, I've got dinner to fix, a cake to bake, a house to clean, a gift to wrap. I just don't think I have it in me to decorate. She looked at me obviously frustrated with my lack of ambition. And she said with her hands crossed sternly over her, well, if you're not going to decorate, I will. She asked for tape and streamers and got to work. Well, it's pretty hard to hang streamers when you're like three feet tall, but she did the best she could, hanging a streamer straight on the wall here, straight on the wall over here. She then drew some pictures and asked how to spell happy birthday and hung her little signs on the walls of the house. She put her hands on her hips when she was done and admired her hard and good work. My son, who's four years old, Winslow, walked in, looked around and said, wow, Esther, you're an artist. I admired her tenacity and her persistence, that we will celebrate and celebrate well. It was important to her that even the walls of our house signaled to her pa that we were celebrating his birthday. Children know how to celebrate. Children know how to look around at the world with amazement and awe. It's easier for them because everything is still kind of new. But we adults, we can be so jaded that we often don't even notice the beauty around us. We are often asleep in our own lives, moving from text to text, task to task, email to email, function to function, with our heads down, barely noticing the minutes or moments passing. Even on a dark day, there is something to celebrate. A ray of sunshine coming through a window, perhaps. A song you love. A yummy treat. Author Richard J. Foster talks about celebration as a spiritual discipline. I think this is a fascinating idea. It implies that we have to try to celebrate, that we have to practice celebrating, that we have to be reminded to celebrate. And how true is that? It's easy to remember the hard, challenging, and less than favorable moments in a day. Like when my kids spilled their ice cream all over their pants and cried and cried and cried, or when you locked your keys in your car, or when your coworker said that one annoying passive aggressive thing you hate, Again, it just gets under our skin, doesn't it? It ends up defining an experience or a day. But what happens when we live with Psalm 148 in our hearts? What if we make Psalm 148 our foundational song? Looking around and remembering that the moon and the sun and the clouds and the stars, they're all testifying to God's goodness. Certainly, that is something worth celebrating. 
Celebration does not brush hardship under the rug. It doesn't shame people for feeling angry or sad or grieved. Celebration is something that you discipline yourself to do with the help of the Holy Spirit as you move through all these feelings and experiences. Cool in the Gang sings, celebrate good times, come on. Because celebration is contagious. You can't help but bring people along with you. They sing, it's time to come together. It's up to you, what's your pleasure? Everyone around the world, come on. Psalm 148 describes a creation whose very existence is a celebration of the sovereignty and goodness of God. Praise him, the psalm says. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, mountains and hills. Praise him, kings and queens. Praise him, all you people. Praise him. Praise is a celebration of who God is, what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. In this Christmas season, we praise God, the creator of the universe, for becoming incarnate in the person Jesus, choosing a peasant girl to birth and mother the Son of God, choosing a carpenter father to raise this son, a son who would go on to bring good news to the powerless, the hungry, and the poor, who would break bread with a ragtag group of adolescents and die the death of a revolutionary criminal on a cross to eventually defeat death and ascend into heaven all because of love. Now that, that is a reason to celebrate. So I ask you, will you celebrate? If so, then let's sing it together. Celebrate good times, come on. Celebrate in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.
friends, please remain standing. Let us affirm our faith now using the words of the historic Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. Let us say this creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Rachel, for that stirring sermon. I was thinking about how the, the shepherds must have felt as they were out there in the field, and these myriads of angels were up there. They were celebrating, weren't they? The angels were celebrating Christ's birth. I guess the shepherds wouldn't know how to get up and dance, would they? But they, <laughs> they probably felt like celebrating because of the wonderful news that was given to them by the angels. Let us prepare now for our morning prayers. Let us spend a few moments in silence before we take our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord of all creation, we pray you for this beautiful earth which you have created. For the health of all bodies of water, we pray. For rivers and streams, especially those running through St. John's County here. We pray for our beaches and ocean waters that they may be gradually cleaned up and purified for all to enjoy. After all, all that is your creation. We pray for all who live directly <clears throat> by the bounty of the earth, for those who sow seeds, <clears throat> raise livestock, catch fish and seafood, for people who work in processing plants and factories or manufacture farm implements, for people who pack and haul and sell their vegetables, fruits and meats that we all enjoy. Bless those who do not have access to all of this bounty we lift, us, lift up especially those in the regions of St. John's County that are of low income. We pray for children around the world, especially those who are in unpleasant home situations <clears throat> and are deprived of the basic nourishment for their health. We pray for victims of plane crashes and shootings in various cities across the country and indeed across the world. We pray for the countries of Syria and Afghanistan where conflicts continue, especially in Syria. They've been having a war for so long, over 10 years. Somehow, O oh Lord, we can you bring peace to that troubled land and all places in the Middle East. On this day, we pray for our government leaders, local, state, national, and international. We pray for our president, and his family. We pray for a somehow, Lord, a sense of cooperation and harmony among those who make plans for our nation, working together with a spirit of kindness, sensitivity, and justice. We pray for our own congregation, for our pastor, Hunter Camp, and his family, for all staff and their families, for all members of our congregation who are ill, or sorrowing over the passing of loved ones. Pray for all those in this congregation here this morning. Some may be harboring hurts of various kinds or disappointments. Draw near to them and give them the comfort and strength of your Holy Spirit. All these and many other prayers we lift up before your throne of grace, and we do it through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together 
when he gave us the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. In response to this wonderful gift which we celebrate each Christmas, let us give generously of our tithes and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give on thanks and praise. Loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Receive the gifts we offer for the sake of Jesus Christ. Clothe us with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, that we may be Christ for others. In his name we pray. Amen. My friends, I charge you this day to go out into the world and celebrate what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do in the person of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord above bless you and keep you, and may the peace of his Son, Jesus Christ, be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>